I, I won't know if I want to announce it. Um, announce it? Okay, fine. Wow, no way. Also, people say that you're grifting. Bro, get up this act about this Islam. Bro, like, you're not on the deal like that. My relationship with Allah is personal, no matter how much people try to, to speculate that. Like, people pretending like I don't exist. I think it's an ego thing, right? It's probably an ego thing. Like, I'm not sure why Speed and Kaisen would just walk past you like you don't exist. And I want to ask you about our brother then, Andrew Tate. You and Andrew Tate still talk. This is why I feel good about rejecting the $20 million gambling deal is because I gained a lot of respect in the eyes of people that I want to be around. But how was that process of actually quitting alcohol? Was there like withdrawal symptoms? You were probably drinking every day, man. That's a good question. You want to know the trick to quitting alcohol? What do you think about crypto? Yeah, I'm making a lot of money on crypto right yeah? now. I'm very yeah, happy about that. Exactly. Putting, I just put money in there and let it sit. Yeah. Like I made a lot of money. Do I make money from streaming? Yeah. Come on, bro. Come on, man. Yeah. Just last year, year. In my life now is uh, is being hungry for 15 days for Ramadan. I'm starving. I can tell you're hungry right now too. Yeah. You get a Nancy. He's smelling those dates coming in. Allahu Akbar. Good afternoon and thank you for returning back to the channel, The Ahmad Mahmood Show, the podcast where we discuss business, happiness, personal finance, and success. Today, I'm joined with none other than Brother Sneeko in this Ramadan fasting style episode. Sneeko, thank you for being here, brother. Assalamu alaikum. Thanks for having me, man. Alaikum, man. It's good to see you again. It's been yeah, a long time. Long time, brother. Yeah. Our first few videos, they blew up. It was, uh, I guess, before you were more into Dean as you are now. You know, I, guys, for those of you who don't know, I told Sneeko, I told him off camera. I told him, bro, get off this act about this Islam. Bro, like, you're not on the deal like that. You thought I was grifting. I thought you were grifting. Yeah. But you understand why? I don't understand why now. But does it, does it make sense why? Like, I mean, online also people say that you're grifting. They do, yeah. They say that you're always in the club. And I'd be lying if, if, I, if I didn't, like, you know, observe you one, one time in the club, you know? Well, here's the thing. It's like, I completely, I stopped drinking. You know, I leave girls behind. I stopped committing Zeno, all this stuff. I've just been, for the past couple of months, but especially this year, all it is is just gym and work. And then if I go to one UFC after party, I'm there with Nate Diaz and Jake Shields, and then all my friends, uh, Sugar Sean won the fight, so all the influencers are in the club. Like, oh yeah, I'll go for the UFC after party, and then I'm in the background of like a Nelk video, and then the, the baby killers take a screenshot, and like, look at, oh, look at the Muslim Sneeko at the club. Like, I'm there for one second. If you, if you ever do anything that's not absolutely perfect, like going to, you know, and especially when you're in this industry, this is the place you're supposed to be. Networking in this world and doing it properly, you're gonna, you know, you're gonna end up in those situations. Facts, facts. Yeah, the haram police are everywhere, man. Yeah. But how was that process of actually quitting alcohol? Then, like many people today, they're watching this and struggling with alcohol addiction. That's a good like, question. Can you talk about the actual feeling, like every day, like? Was there like withdrawal symptoms? Did you feel like every day? Because I guess you were probably drinking every day, man. Every day is crazy. No, <laughs> no? No, no. Okay. You really thought I was a party animal. <laughs> we were hanging out like uh, you have this, this idea that I was, uh, no, I wasn't full sending it every single day. Okay. I didn't have withdrawals or anything. I'm not a heroin addict, but I was like drinking pretty regularly. Almost every, actually, actually thinking about it now, almost every day, I would say like five, four or five times a week. But you don't want to know the trick to quitting alcohol? You just stop drinking. You just, just put drinking. it down. Just stop. Yeah. yeah. Just stop and then... Go to the gym more, work more. You know what's really good during Ramadan is that you see what your mind is capable of when you put all things aside. When you're fasting and then you have that free hour in the day that you would be having a donut or having a coffee and then it's figuring out, okay, well, I'm not going to be sitting at a restaurant or at a cafe right now. I'm not going to be having a beverage. Can't be watching porn. Can't check out. What am I going to be doing with this time? So just stop doing it. It's yeah. really that simple, you know? Fair enough. Makes sense. But I mean, I think what a lot of people struggle with is, I guess, when they're in those wrong friend groups, like you mentioned, you know, when you're with those type of people, I guess in Dubai, it's, I mean, it's common everywhere, basically. But, you know, in U.S., especially when you're growing up, all your friends drink. How would you, how would you advise someone to sit amongst like a bunch of people who are drinking? Like, should they just change friend groups to just sit alone? I honestly recommend that you change those friend groups because whether or not you like to admit it, you're going to be easily influenced by the people that you're around. I like traveling with other Dawa guys. I'm here with the Warner all the time because when you have other friends who are Shout on Dean... Yeah, shout out to the Warner. When you have friends that are on Dean, you're going to be more likely to stay on Dean. You know, if you're around friends that are listening to music, you're going to hear the music blaring. So that's a, a perfect example of how you're going to be influenced by the people that you're around. If you're around people who are just drinking and smoking all day, you should probably not hang out with them as much because 
you know, you're going to accidentally, if you were in a barbershop all day, eventually you're going to get your hair cut. Facts, yeah. And the music is a funny one as well. Not a lot of people watching this, they may not they don't know that music is actually something haram in Islam. And the amount of studies that I've read, because me growing up as a, a born Muslim, I grew up thinking, why is music haram? You know, like, what's, what's about music that makes it haram? So I looked into some studies online, and there's so many, like, scientific evidence to show that the type of music we listen to. I mean, people know it themselves when a song gets stuck in their head and they replay that same words, you know, and if it's something like, like, oh, I feel like, it's some, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. imagine that's replaying in your head again and again. Like, your subconscious mind could be thinking about anything. You could put that to think about how to make money or how to do, you know what I mean? Like, I've been very aware of that. Um, have you cut out music during Ramadan? Yes, completely. Yeah, just listening to Quran. Uh, sometimes I have jinn that visit me in my dreams what? because, no, I do, because because I'm more on D now and especially the things I'm talking about, we can get into this as podcast, but I'm getting attacked more. I can tell that people are trying to, to like cast spells and the evil eyes watch me right now. So I notice it a lot more when I dream, like women will come and visit me in my dream. And then right before I woke up today, like music was blaring and my dream was of me like dancing to, um, I don't remember what song, some hip hop song. And then I woke up and like I, I had to snap out of it because I've been trying to, to put that away. Not only do the frequency that they play the music at is supposed to like make you violent, yeah. uh, they play it at a it's the same thing that they play in voodoo rituals in haiti they play a drum and they beat the drum at a certain time to eventually you kind of lose possession of your body and you're not thinking clearly anymore the drum will have you it's in a trance yeah the, the the drum will put you in a trance and it'll it have you intoxicated to do something the voodoo rituals i don't even want to speak about it right now in the holy month of ramadan but it's really demonic so i, w I would highly recommend people cut it out and we were sitting in the hotel lobby the other day Especially when you, when you stop, when you go cold turkey of music, not even alcohol, you re realize again when you hear a song how every single lyric, not just the frequency of the drums, how even the lyrics will drive you to become a simp. True. There was a song like, um, I guess you never fall out of love and that it's just it's playing in your head. You're thinking about like how um, it's never over. It's never over. Yeah, it's over. Yeah. Like when you leave a girl, it's over because you're going to listen to that song like maybe it's never over. Literally. And then you call her yeah. and then you text her and it's then it. you give her flowers for this girl and you forgot about all the things that happened, the reason that you left her in the first place. No, it's over for a reason. But uh, like even that little song, which sounds like a, a lighthearted yeah. song you might hear in the mall yeah. shopping, it's but it's going to stick in your subconscious. You're going to leave Marshalls or like leave with that T-shirt and then call up that terrible ex-girlfriend <laughs> that ruined your life. <laughs> Yeah, so stop I, listening to me. Try it out. Try it out. Christians, Jews, yeah, everyone. Yeah. Literally, either makes you very sad or it either, you know, makes you sin. And all the hip-hop songs are always about either theft or crime or something bad, you know? And it's weird that they're trying, it seems like they're trying to program us with it, you know? Because why else are those songs always the most popular? Why are those ones always on the charts, you know? Yeah, because sin is the most, <clears throat> it's the most easily consumable ideology in the world. When I do charity, it doesn't go viral from the drama pages when I'm like Sneeko spotted in the club and I'm like in the background, like just waving, like that goes viral. The negativity will always sell more just like sin and just like everything in the music. And I, I, I want to criticize people for like, for we do too much to encourage this. Like there's a, an artist, sexy red, and all she does is uh, she puts on a wig and she just had a child. She advocates for single parent households. She's twerking and popping Percocets and all she raps about is murder. And like, I've noticed this Ramadan, how, there's one song I was like scrolling on my phone and then I heard it played in an edit and it was, uh, this is the lyric. Sorry for repeating it, but she says, I'm looking for the hoes. Make that ass, bitch. Shake that ass, bitch. It just for five seconds, that has been echoing in my head nonstop. And we see other, other streamers and other influential people. We got to, we got to call this out more because yeah. it, because of sexy red, you could see videos of little girls going to stripper classes. Oh, they get on the pole. Stuff a lot. They, they go on the pole and they're, they're playing out the music. Or like kids in kindergarten, kindergarten classes. The teacher doesn't know better because teachers are not that very smart at yeah. the same time. But they'll be um, remixing the songs to, you know, do drawings with yeah. the... Instead of shake that ass, bitches, draw the, draw the elephant, kid. And, and but it's giving them that same kind of addiction. Like that same it gives them that dopamine yeah. release that, that we get by listening to Haram music. And it makes them familiar with the tone. Like Later on, when they hear the more Haram version, they feel like they like it because they're, they're familiar with it. Because they're already used to it. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's like, uh, you know, that's how they reel them in. But it's, it's interesting you talk about it. And um, like the amount of just, if you think about the amount of time, like leave alone, leave alone all the negative aspects. Just the amount of time you spend listening to music, that time you could just spend listening to audiobooks, you know. Better, things that can actually help you in life, you know. Type of like, even Quran, like when I listen to Quran, it really calms me down. Like it's, it's all about like trusting God and like everything in Quran just always makes me feel like more calm, more peaceful. 
more like I should, like I'm on the right, I'm doing the right thing. You know what I mean? It, it really like changes my perspective. When I was listening to Quran the other day, it was just like, I was like stressing about something and the guy was, the, 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 the reciter was talking about like, tawakkul ala Allah and stuff like that, which means like just fully submiss- submitting and trusting God and his plan for you. And if that's what you're listening throughout your day, like your, your mood is obviously going to shift. You're always obviously going to be in a better mood and stuff like that. You know? That's been the best thing to reset my mood because I'm in a really stressful time. Objectively, like I, stress doesn't really get to me like that. But the amount of attacks that I'm getting and you see, issue. just lost my Instagram account for a reason. I didn't get an email. Like Meta just shut it out like that. And everyone's asking like the people that are trying to fix it, like, why'd you get banned? I don't know. Uh, just people are attacking from every single angle, especially as I do more good. You see the more people are trying to, I don't know if you've seen, there's just more haters coming out of the woodwork works fighters streamers political advocate um organizations they're all they're writing hit pieces all this and so it is a stressful time objectively the one thing and i recommend this to people watching is listening to the quran like whenever it seems like it's too much or i don't know what to do when i need guidance i play it and then i my brain is reset and that was part of the reason i reverted because you could see a video of animals like there's a there was a guy driving and he's played the call to prayer from his car and all the cows came to the car as if they they were they were being called to pray um there's something, there's definitely something to it. I think even if you aren't Muslim, listen to the Quran instead. And also you can maximize your time. All that time that you spend in the car, you're completely correct. Listening to music that's just like turning your brain off. Or when I was in LA doing streams with Neon, for example, whenever we're in the car, there'd be like in a rented Lambo or something. His team and him would just like be blasting like Lil Baby or, or something like that. And it's just like talking about drugs and money just to kind of like fill up the, the, the space in the air. Because we can't, we don't know how to sit in silence. You know, let's let's bring us back. You, we can't have clear thoughts, and it's like our minds are almost are so programmed to that music that we're distracted without it. Now, when you go away from that, and your mind is okay with silence and is okay with Quran, you get to maximize way more time. The thirty minutes you spend driving from point A to point B, like when I was on the way here, I was listening to someone break down the P Diddy. Um, the, the P. Diddy case and you got to figure out like his connections to different agencies, his connections in the, in the music industry for the past 30 years about how he's been blackmailing people since the 90s. And so now I'm like I'm filled with more of this information rather than hearing, you know, sexy red twerk on Percocets. Yeah, true. So you talk about these other influencers, you know, how do they feel about your recent conversion? Are you going to meet them still? Are you going to try to get them to convert too? I don't think that I I tried to at first when you try to speak about Islam, especially because I'm a new revert and it's people don't really want to hear it, especially people who come from the dunya. They don't want to hear it from me. I think that they'd be more willing to hear it from somebody who's more knowledgeable, but I try to talk about it. Some like the Warner. Yeah. The Warner would be, he's, he's really effective. Uh, the Warner's here to warn you. Like he, the way he talks about it, he makes it fun, which is his dot was effective because when I was uh, new as a Muslim and I still am, I remember him saying something like, we finish a podcast or finish some work. It's like, let's go catch a prayer. Yo, you want to go catch a prayer? Let's get some food after. It's almost like, yo, let's go smoke a joint and then go to the, you know, it just seemed like something. Let's just do this real quick. You know, yeah, the enthusiasm with it. We got Hamza to pray for, for the first time in a while. I think he grew up with Islam. So he came on my stream. We squashed our beef from a couple of years ago. And then we, yeah, we were able to break bread, hang out. And then afterwards, um, I think Warner was really effective at, at getting him to pray because he was just, he's just enthusiastic about it. Like, let's go pray. You know, kind of like, yo, let's go. Like, it was just, like, you know, just really like, just made it seem cool. And like, and Hamza was like, let's do it. You know, just, you get somebody amped up to go and, and worship the one true creator. Yeah, prayer is the most important. So what about your parents then? I remember last time we had a chat. I don't remember if it was you or not. Your parents were not really happy about Islam or was it you? Yeah, it was me. My parents are really happy about it. Uh, it's even though they're not Muslim yet, inshallah, they, they get there soon. I make the um, dua for them, but they're really happy with it. And they don't have a full understanding. There's some things they disagree with. Obviously, like they like music. You know, everybody loves music. I love music, um, but they're, they're really happy that I'm on the straight path because they can see that objectively spreading the message of Islam is spreading something that's good for the world. Even if they don't agree with it, and even if the people that are calling me a Muslim grifter, even if I am grifting and everything that I talk about is promoting Islam, it's a net positive for the world, right? I rejected the $20 million gambling deal. I'm only talking about how you should work hard, how you should worship God, how you should be respectful. I rejected that in order to stay on the dean because I don't want my audience to be corrupted. So if I hold Islamic values publicly, that's a good thing for the world. So that's why it doesn't really bother me when people say that because it also applies more pressure to do well publicly and privately because even then, if I do everything uh, publicly, my relationship with Allah is personal, no matter how much people try to, to speculate that. So I, I think it's good. And I want to ask you about our brother then, Andrew Tate, you know, as he was one of the first celebrities or influencers to convert to Islam 
recently in the recent time. And I wanted to ask you, how's your relationship with him right now? Do you and Andrew Tate still talk or do you guys still hang out? Do you still talk to each other or not so much? No, we don't talk that much. I talk to Tristan sometimes, but no, we don't really speak that much. But yeah, may Allah guide them. I think that they're innocent. I, yeah, there's no beef at all. I'm, I really hope the best. I see some that. shorts sometimes. You know, apparently you guys are like sneak dissing each other. Like you're trying to like you're, you say a video and they say that they manipulate it to sound like you're insulting him on your video or something like that. They want to divide us. And so I want to put out a message there for the Muslims and the Christians, the Jews, the people that believe in God. They're, they're trying to divide us because they can't conquer unless we're divided. So they're going to try to put us, they're going to try to like stir up beef and stuff like that. They do that with all my friends. They do it with me and Fresh and Fit. Like I've even seen the baby killers are trying to say like, Sneeko's criticizing Myron. Myron's one of my best friends in the world, man. Love that guy. He's a brother of mine. Um, He's still a dork, but yeah, he's a, he's a good guy. And they, they try to like separate us because they don't want us to be on the same side. Because when you, when you have a team of good people that are pushing a similar message, that's how you win. But if you get all this infighting, and I, I even want to criticize this between the, the Dawa community. Uh, as a new Muslim, like I'm really interested in Islam and learning as much as I possibly can. This whole month, every day we've been doing streams with different sheikhs and Islamic scholars. And it's like, there's all this drama. You know, I, I didn't expect that coming in. I'm not trying to shed a bad light, but it's like, I want everybody to be more united. Like, I think that, especially during this month, you should be able to, to put the, the ego aside and be able to, to pick up the phone call and say, you know, like, okay, well, what was the disagreement? And I'm sure that that's going to happen soon. I'm sure that, that everybody's going to be able to, to set that aside because tomorrow's not promised. Uh, one thing that I'm, I'm critical about with the other streamers is that, you know, that there's disagreements. Or sometimes I'm sure you saw like people like, pretending like it don't exist. Tomorrow's not promised. Like, you know, who knows if, the, if that's the last interaction that you're going to have with somebody. Try to always make sure that the last time you speak to somebody is positive. You, may, you shake their hand, you look them in the eye, you tell your mom you love her, you know, you say you, you show appreciation to your employees or your friends. Always make sure because you, you never know what's going to happen. I think it's an ego thing, right? It's probably an ego thing. Like, I'm not sure why Speed and Kai Sena would just walk past you like you don't exist. It's, it, it is what it is. Yeah, I don't want to get too, uh, too deep into that, but yeah, who cares? Who cares? I mean, if it, I believe in the, um, the saying, only go where you're celebrated, which is why I'm in the Middle East. You know, like I'm around a lot of Muslim brothers and the brotherhood here is better than I've, that I've noticed with anything else. It's better than like, I'm sure you know about like paid networks or stuff like that. People in college will join a fraternity and then they do hazing rituals, stuff like that. Like they'll have to do stuff with pizza and like it, elephant walks. It's better to have an Islamic brotherhood because when you're all supposed to serve God, what better purpose do you all have? You're not going to have any brotherhood unless you have a common objective, a common goal. For the military, it's beating the enemy. But in Islam, it's, it's worshiping God. It's getting closer there. So. so what's a day in your life looking like right now as a new Muslim? Day in my life now is, uh, is being hungry all day, like uh, for, for 15 days, first Ramadan. I'm starving, man. I, I'm so, I can tell you're hungry right now until you're getting antsy. He's smelling those dates coming in. You know fasting, everyone talks about now intermittent fasting and stuff like that, but it existed for us 1,400 years ago, you know? Even stuff like the Prophet when he used to sleep on the right side. You know, they always used to say that the, the son of the Prophet that he used to sleep on his right side. When you sleep on your right side, your heart is less obstructed by your liver. I'll show a diagram on the screen for those of you guys who don't know understand. There's just so much proof. There's just so much proof, I know. Like, what was the main thing that really stuck, stuck, stuck out for you, like, out of everything? The proof, the miracles, the Quran, because there's many of those as well. What do you say is the main thing? The fact that the Quran has not been corrupted in 1,400 years. Uh, some people like to debate and they say, like, oh, there's 10 different versions. They translate it from different languages because people speak different languages across the world. Islam was one of the most international religions in the world. There's so many in Malaysia, Bangladesh. People don't realize that the Middle East is not even the predominant area where Muslims exist. A lot of them are in Asia. And so they're like, oh, the Quran's been translated. Yeah, that doesn't mean it's a different version. It's just people speak different languages. I think that's what I resonated with, the fact that it hasn't been corrupted. And Because it was memorized. Like if all the Qurans were like, Astaghfirullah, I would have been burned today in one minute or like 10 minutes. Are you a Hafiz? No way, bro. I wish. You're Hafiz not? is crazy. No. I know, I, I know, like, uh, I'd say I know, like, you know, quite a lot of the 30th Subara, 30th Juz, the, like the 30th chapter, because mm -hmm. that was like all the short, short surahs. You Did know? you have to recite a surah to get married? Oh, I don't know if you want to speak about that. Why? What or, or, are you public about that? About what? About the fact you're going to get married soon. Oh, uh, I mean, not really, but yeah, like, this is a good time as any. Inshallah, guys, within six, seven months, uh, well, I get engaged first. But yeah, six, seven months, I'm already like, you know, my mom's been, been in the community, you know, telling the other moms. I've even been speaking to a couple. Uh, so I've spoken to a couple. So inshallah, it will go well. You know, uh, guys, if you look up the 
our divorce rates right now for arranged marriages, it's 4% online. Just take your phone Google right now, 4%. And if you search for love marriages, it's 40 to 50%, you yeah. know? Like when Over I, 50% sometimes. Imagine like when, a girl, when a girl and a guy, a girl, let's say in the Western world, they meet the guy in the club, they're already half drunk, they sleep together. Next morning they wake up, they go for breakfast, they go out, they go back, they sleep together, they go for activities. Three, four days, they fall in love with each other, they don't know anything about the person. For me, I know everything about the girl before I met her. I know what she studied in university, I know what she likes to do in her free time, how many kids she wants to have, what type of role does she want to have in her family, does she want to have a traditional role, does she want to Do you know what her hair looks like? <laughs> no. <laughs> but I think there's a way, I don't know, I mean, I can ask her, you know? But I think even, the, depending on what shakes you follow, there's a way that you can, you can actually see your hair before you get married, like once you're engaged and stuff like that. There's disagreements about it, about yeah. how much you can see before. I know, but... It depends it, on what you follow. It's ins insignificant, you know? Yeah. You, you can't, you can't... It's pretty significant. It, no, but it's shallow. Like, just the color of her hair, like, what if it was like... It, what if she was bald? Uh, you assume that she's not bald. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But, like, even if she has hair... It's not going to be like, because uh, for me, definitely I'm going to marry a hijabi, yeah? Because if, if your wife's not a hijabi, your kids will never be a hijabi. And you can't have, like, haram kids, you know what I mean? So, I always, if her hair is, like, red, you can make, sell it, make it black, you know what I mean? What if it smells really bad? Why would her hair smell bad, bro? I don't know, bro, you but don't know. These are, these are the type of things I feel like it's, like, anomalies, like, one in, like, I don't know any girl whose hair smells bad that looks after it, you know? Like, why would it smell That's bad, true. you know? Yeah. But something else could smell bad, that, that one, like, I don't know. Stuff for stuff for <laughs> You just got to, you got to firm it, bro. Mm. Well, yeah, congrats on that. Congrats <laughs> you, on that. Thank you, man. But nowadays, there's so many technology. Like, I was telling you about an app that you can use to, like, find Muslim women, good Muslim women. You can choose on a scale, like, how religious they are, how many times they pray. You know, because this stuff matters. Like, imagine in the Western world, you, they meet girls they don't even know, and they fall, they start doing shit with them. I told someone that I want to do all this stuff before I get married. He's like, this sounds like a job interview, like a CV. I told him, bro. Before you do an interview to hire someone, you do all these questions and you get the CB and everything before you even look sit with them in the interview. And for marriage, is marriage the less significant that you want to meet the person and start doing shit with them before you even know everything about them? You know what I mean? So better yeah. to know everything about it in advance and then have the talks. And stuff. I don't want to do it through an app, ideally. Yeah, not through an app. Like through like. I mean, app. I guess all of it is algorithm based to some extent. If you really want to go deep in there. I was getting a lot of marriage propositions on Instagram, which is like maybe that's why they started attacking it because they saw that was going to be my true way to happiness. <laughs> I was getting like mothers and fathers were DMing me and um, girls were saying that they were interested and now my Instagram's gone. So yeah. Mark Zuckerberg, please reinstate me so I can get married. I think that would be the next step. And you're growing a lot on Twitter though. Yeah, yeah growing a lot on Twitter, of course, man. We're, may Allah guide Elon Musk. Was this some coffee? Yeah. So how's work now? So you don't, you don't stream on, you don't stream on Kick, only on Rumble. Only on Rumble, yeah. I can't believe you thought I streamed on Kick. I, I, I don't watch streams. I thought everyone streams on cake. Thank you, bro. I thought everyone streams on How cake. do you have that perception? Uh, because all your friends stream on cake, right? That's true. I am in that world so quite I a bit. I just assume like, everyone like, posts shorts and stuff. I didn't think anyone... Because when I see clips from a stream, I didn't think anyone watches Rumble, to be honest. So when I saw someone post... Like, this is the I place like, where free speech is. Yeah, I like Rumble, but... I don't do you know, know who else on Rumble? Do you know who else on Rumble? Andrew. You've had on, on this podcast Fresh okay. and Fit. Yeah. Donald Trump, you haven't had on. You would like to have Donald Trump on. Everyone. He's one of the biggest Rumble creators, Donald Trump. Of course, the yeah, Tate brothers. Yeah, but they, you got me. Yeah, I know. Not only Sneeko, you got Rice Gum. We got a, academics. Academics is one of the biggest streamers right now. Extremely underrated. It's about He's, off. Rumble. The Rumble. Rumble's where it's at. That's where the, the smart people are. Russell Brand is killing it on there. What do you think about crypto? I'm making a lot of money on crypto right yeah? now. I'm very happy yeah, about right. that. So SubhanAllah. You're putting, you're, putting, you're putting some dough there? I like to let it sit because I've, I've been too addicted to it before, and that's why I see like the Haram police, they like to compare altcoins to gambling, and they call it Haram. I think a couple years ago during the last bull run, that's when I was like at my computer and my eyes were like, I look like a raccoon like here all day. I wouldn't recommend that for people. I think that you should just have a, a couple, couple hundred Gs, just let it sit. Just a couple hundred Gs. Just don't let all your money sit in there. Have it there and it, it diversify different websites. Or Which also, yeah. Also, some people are going to call it Haram, but it's fine. I have some, um, some Pepe. I don't think it's Haram. It's, it's debatable, yeah. yeah. But, but we, I recommend... Because we know social media. We know how trends work. We're not doing yeah. it blindly, you know? Yeah. And also, I'm not doing it like... I'm not doing the trading thing all the time. I just put money in there and let it sit. Yeah. Uh, but it's doing really well. Like, I made a lot of money in Pepe. Pepe. Pepe, yeah. Nice. I love that. I love that. There's a lot of, um, like, base coins coming out, like, uh, like racist coins coming up yeah, from these trends. Yeah, those crazy. I know, bro. Those like, blew up. I don't want to say. You were talking about sectarian, like you were talking about how like the ummas like we're beefing with each other, and like, even between Christians and stuff. Like we have common enemies, like at the world, especially as Muslims. Like we have common enemies against us, you know, and like we have like our 
like the people who are against us in, in Palestine, you know? The Christians and Muslims need to, need to unite. Yeah, for sure. 100%. We have more in common than we have that divides us. So it makes more sense to just like, instead of debating and arguing over something that we're not going to change our minds on, it's better that the Christians and Muslims and, and even the Jews, the Jews that are against uh, what's happening right now, it's better that we unite on our common, our common goals. How many but, hours yeah. do you stream a day right now? Every day, pretty much. I would say a couple hours a day. I would say on average two to three a day. Do I make money from streaming? Yeah. Like, Come on, bro. Hello? Rumble? Come on, man. Yeah? Oh, no, but it's, it's, it's fun cause, cause I, I know you make money in general, yeah. but I, I know your sources may be different. Like maybe you make more money if you just use the stream to promote the, your, your um, what's it called? The word for it? I make, I make, a, I make a lot on streaming. Okay, okay. So yeah. You have that course. What's it called? I have a lot of, yeah. We, we plug it, bro. We diversify. Yeah. Oh, don't worry. It's okay, man. It's okay. <laughs> we're man. good. We're good. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, it's diversified. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll keep it at that. How does streaming payment work? Like subscriptions? It's, um, it's from Rumble. Rumble has a lot of good ads on there. Okay, okay. okay yeah. Okay. Interesting. Okay. So do you think that money buys happiness? No, I don't think money buys happiness. Sometimes I do, but I, realizing like the power of prayer is that, no, I don't think money buys happiness. Yeah, I think... Nice. It can make you feel good in, in, in the short time. And of course, like being able to spoil people is, is, is nice. Getting the nice things in life. Giving money away. Giving money away. Charity feels good, but that's not, that's not buying happiness. That's the, in fact, it's the opposite. It's removing the money you have. Exactly. It's the subtraction of wealth. Yeah. So I, I don't think that, that money buys happiness. Uh, and you're not going to be able to take it with you. I want to get to the point where I don't think in terms of... Things. Where I don't need to think, where I'm not... Constantly thinking about how to get to a hundred million dollars, eat like have that in my bank because it sounds good, but really you're chasing it to compete with other people, to prove other people wrong, and you're doing it to satisfy your ego. Wealth is and like what really can you buy? What I've noticed is a better currency than than money is respect, and is having a good network. Malcolm X, for example, he never had a really big house, but he had people around him and he had a network that he was able to do what he wanted when he wanted to do it. And he had legacy, huge legacy. Everyone and he had legacy, which is, again, you're not going to be able to see your legacy when you're, it's, that's not extremely important. Um, yeah, like how many people care about like, I don't know, like Zuck when he dies, you know? Like, I don't know. Nothing. And again, that doesn't matter. You're dead anyway. Yeah. So even if they do care, you're dead, you're not going to be able to reap the benefits. You're, you want to be in heaven. It's true, but you had a good, like, you, you change people's life positively. That's important. Them, you know? like, That's important. So like a Jaria type stuff. You know? So you can get it to heaven. Having, having money specifically, and this is why I feel good about rejecting that $20 million gambling deal is because I gained a lot of respect in the eyes of people that I want to be around. And so I'm able to travel to the places that I want to be in. And if I show up in London, okay, Muhammad Ajab is going gonna, is gonna to host me. I'm going to meet Ali Dawa. All these people are going to take me out to dinner. Uh, people are going to give me gifts. I'm going to get the experience that I want being able to travel the world. If I show up in Dubai, if I show up in Mecca, all the right people. For example, I have a Christian filmer. He wasn't be able to go to Mecca with me, so I had to find a filmer in Mecca. I'm like scrambling. My Instagram's deleted. I can't use my DMs. I found somebody on the plane. Somebody on the plane respects what I do, respects what I say. He films for me, and he's, he's showing me around. Yesterday, the reason that I got to go on the helicopter ride was because that was his friend. So sacrificing money, when you think money buys happiness, you might accept a gambling deal. When you realize that respect is a more valuable currency, not only are you going to have a better life, but you're going to have a better afterlife. I respect you for that, man. Really, that's crazy. $20 million, like anyone can say that. That was man. bars right there, right? Yeah, sorry. Yeah, that was. About $15 million, man, like 15, $20 million, it's life-changing money, man. Like it's, it's, I don't think anyone watching this video could say like hand on heart, like they would easily pass that up. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Well, an interesting point about like, money and this stuff, like if you think you have a money problem, if you think having more money would solve the issue, it's really not the, not the case because having more money would always leave you with that. It's, a, it's an unquenchable desire. It's always going to be gratitude. More money, more problems. That's yeah. a P. Diddy song. And look how many problems he has right now. So, But you know, yeah, true. But in general, like money, it's, it's an unquenchable thirst. When it's, whereas if you feel gratitude, if you try to keep being grateful, instead, instead of trying to quench the thirst of money, you will never quench it. Rather, just start to become more grateful for what you already have. Because exactly. There's never thirst. enough. No, no, no. Like, is, is, see, right now the, the goal in my mind is, and you know, it's funny. I have this goal of 100 million. Why? Because there's a little baby lyric. I ain't got 100 mil yet. I can't chill yet. So I'm like, okay, well, I can't lose a little baby. I need 100 million. But guess what's going to happen? 100 million. You want a billion? We're going to want a billion. You're going to be like, listen to the Jay-Z song where he talks about a billion. <laughs> right. Or billionaires, only billionaires can sit in my room. And then you're like, okay. But you're never going to have enough. 
So just, just have enough to be able to have to provide for your family. If at to, some point you're gonna need to be grateful for what you have, just be grateful now. <laughs> you know what I mean? One hundred percent. Because tomorrow's not promised. The guy went to a hotel. Okay, he stays in a hotel, and when he goes inside the room, he realizes the TV is small. So he's like, man, this TV is too small. I can't enjoy my football game. So he went and buy, bought a bigger TV and puts it in the hotel room. The hotel lobbies and stuff are looking at him like this guy's a bit weird. Like, what is he doing? You know. Next thing, he, when he was sleeping, he realized that the curtains weren't black through enough. Like he could see there was some sunlight that was seeping in. He said, I need to replace these full curtains. So he went back and he replaced the full curtains in the room. Eventually, he started to change every small bit of aspect. He changed the carpet, he changed the bed, the bed wasn't comfortable. At some point, every, every, obviously, the hotel staff, they asked him, like, brother, what are you doing? Are you stupid? This is a hotel. You're here for a few days. You know what I mean? And they said, the speaker who told me this, he said, such is the life in this dunya. Mm. We come here for a few days. We try to change every small aspect in our life. You know, every small thing. We want to change the shoes that we wear, this and that. This every minute, insignificant thing. We want to control it and improve it and try to make it luxurious and impress people with it. We're here for, for what? 30 years? Like 30 summers? You know, like me and you, we have like, what, 30 summers left? You know what I mean? So, at the end of the day, we're going to go and what's going to happen when we die? Like I said to you before this podcast, like for God, you know, the garbage man who has taqwa is worth way more than the billionaire who doesn't have taqwa and God consciousness. So He's wealthy in taqwa. Exactly, yeah. 100%. That's really the goal. And I see you wearing this hat now. It's just, but this hat looks Louis Vuitton, bro. Is it Louis Vuitton? Does it? No, it's just a kufi. Ah, I got it, okay. I got it in Mecca. Okay, nice. Wait, you thought this is like a pop smoke drill rapper hat? <laughs> no, this is a kufi, man. <laughs> I left that behind back in Brooklyn, bro, when I moved. This, is, uh, this was from Mecca. I got it last trip. <laughs> Do you have any like regrets then, like in life? I want to ask you as you wrap up this video. If there's any big regrets you have throughout your life, are there any regrets that I don't? I don't live with regrets, bro. I think everything happens for a reason. Yeah. Like uh, the, everything is God's plan. We have free will, and it, everything that happens was supposed to happen. So even the, the the terrible things that we see going on right now, it's all part of God's plan. So I I don't think there's any point in living with regret. I think you're supposed to take a lesson from it. Every loss you take, every time I've been like punched or knocked down, think like, okay, how am I going to be able to avoid that in the future? How am I going to get better from this? If you if you sulk in the sadness and think like, oh, maybe I should have slipped here, kept my hand up there, you're not gonna you're not gonna be satisfied. You're not gonna learn anything from it. Every loss you take, you should take a lesson from it. Facts, facts. All right, last question. If you could have a crystal ball in front of you, and I could tell you a truth about anything, any one question, it tells you the truth. What would you ask it? I would take that crystal ball and throw it in the ocean because that's that's kufar. No, that's haram. I'm not gonna. I don't, I'm, that's witchcraft, brother. Brother, uh, if you offer me the crystal ball, I said, "What's that? What's that, brother?" I don't want to know. I trust in God. All right, all right. It's a good answer. Actually, I didn't think about that when I asked the question. But yeah, it's just a hypothetical question, obviously. Yeah. But yeah, for me, I want to know, like, I'd be like, who's the girl I should marry and, and what's her number? Like, I feel like that's such a big vulnerability we have as like, men. Like, we could do everything right in our life and have one woman and then, like, she Fs up everything for us, you know? That's the one woman could destroy an entire empire. It's true. You see, time and time and time and again. It's not like we have a choice. We have to have a companion. You know, we're humans. We have to have a, we can't, we're vulnerable. That's, that's another reason why I was able to leave girls behind and wait till I get married is seeing how quickly a woman could destroy your entire legacy one girl like one little horny night can be 20 years of building up the pieces again so it's better just leave it behind you see that so many men go down with that is it, is it really worth it is it really worth you know a night of fun probably not facts all right bro thank you so much for being here i really Thanks appreciate it my guy bless Ramadan Mubarak, everybody so, Salam